<laughs> follow him on Twitch. Oh, oh, hello. Hello. oh hey guys. Hey guys, Welcome. how you doing? Oh, hello. Hey. Hey guys. Doc is in. The real. Can you guys hear you guys us okay? Hear yeah. 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 We can yes. hear you. Hello. Welcome. Sorry about those technical difficulties. Yeah. Uh, we really no did not foresee that. So, um, to start oh, out, I'm going to introduce I'm going to turn you down like 20%. Me? Oh. No, Carlo. Oh, okay. <laughs> Carlo. <just laughs> really, uh, Carlo's Carlo. Carlo out, yeah. Carlo, be sorry. Come on, uh, I'm going to introduce everyone. If that's okay. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. So, um, we have Yersters. Hey. We have me. Tyler, not Joseph. Uh, up, um, we have Paris. Hello. Simon. Hey. Misfit. Misfit. What's up? V. Hey, all. Uh, um, we have X2, who is hey. a subreddit mod, and he also helped out with our Discord bots. Cool. Then we have Charlie, and he... Charlie, say hi. Hey, I'm here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Charlie. Um, he has done all of our server graphics, so like the rules, banners, all of our Twitter stuff. Cool. That's all him. And then uh, we have me. Uh, I'm Carlo, but I go by Knackbin on Discord. Cool. And finally, we have Poot, who is kind of like the heart of the server, and he is in charge of all the bot stuff. Poot, you want to say? Oh, what's up? What's up, Poot? <laughs> <laughs> Poot's not a fan at all. So yeah. Poot was just like, I'm not going to unmute. I'm just going to let this happen. <laughs> no, he's yeah. he only yeah. likes okay. clear. That's the only song he likes. Yeah, so... that's the only song I like. Yeah, that's all right. So yeah, um, <laughs> that's fine. The server's been around since 2017. Um, we we've always joked about having you on for a Q and A, and like now it's finally happening. I know everybody's really excited. I appreciate you being here, and I'm sure everybody else does as well. So thank you. Definitely. Uh, I've I've I just started kind of using discord recently mark's actually the one that got me into it i didn't really know much about it um but i've started using it with a couple of friends and um and then all of a sudden i was like wait hold on this do my people have a discord and I, <laughs> yeah, I looked it up and i was like you oh did. my goodness oh, this is amazing so i i kind of uh incognito browsed around and you guys are killing it over here so i just want to thank you guys for kind of being the heart and soul of what's going on right now. So I appreciate Thank it. You so much. Thank yeah. Reddit, you. Um, the, the toil pilot subreddit was like my first place to kind of like learn how to, cause at one point it got to so big that like oh, Ty, uh, yeah. Tyler and Josh weren't going to see everything. And like, I would always use that to kind of like have somewhat of filter to be like, Hey, like you might've missed this in your day, but here's this. And, and then that kind of got me over to the discord. And I always tell them like, of all the discords you could be a part of, this one is just so interactive and so it's got so much meat to it to to be a part of. Yeah. Yeah, and that's um that's kind of like mostly as I was saying earlier, that's mostly credit to Poot because he um he's put a lot of hard work into the Discord bots and they like they kind of run everything behind the scenes, like you know, get people the correct roles so they can talk in all the channels and everything. So 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 is Discord like not taking you guys seriously though? <laughs> Hey, listen, I, mean, I guess I not. talked to Discord devs like weeks ago and I told them, hey, we're going to have a lot of people joining at once and I want to know if this is going to work out fine. And they told me th that we shouldn't worry about anything. And <laughs> I guess they were wrong. So it didn't really. What was happening? We, you just go over to the that, that uh, voice I chat can, and it wasn't working or something? I can take XP that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, explain that. So Discord has a lot of weird stuff set up in terms of how they do their connections. There's like weird endpoints and stuff that's a lot of protection behind keeping people's IPs and everything safe. The actual endpoints clients connect to, our server was all hitting to the same endpoint. Everyone joining and streaming, it was actually killing that endpoint. That if you tried to join VC, it starts saying awaiting endpoint and then just disconnect. And some people in the VC were starting to just cut out and chop. And like I was noticing on some of my stuff here that it was just cranking up the CPUs. It's like I've never seen Discord do that before. Yep. Full robot voice. The clients, the client, everything. The clients yeah, just I could not handle it. CPU. We're too big for Discord. What can we say? What can we say? <laughs> what can we say? <laughs> you guys sound so smart. <laughs> <laughs> we are. Wait until I have a it's facade. It's a facade. <laughs> All of us, unfortunately. <laughs> um. So I um. 
I had them pull some just so they know, Mark. Sorry, real quick. Just so they know, I'm looking. I'm. I am kind of following the Discord chat right now. So. Oh, are you looking at Tyler yeah. VC text? Gotcha. Yeah, Pluto says, "Hey, don't spam, please." And I'm like, <laughs> "Not Pluto, <laughs> not spam, guys." That's, uh, that's a yeah, good guy. with how many Thank thousand you, people do we have now? Uh, twenty-seven in the twenty-eight. We hit twenty-eight thousand. Wow. Actually, and a half thousand members since we tweeted. Uh, fun awesome. fact: We are the second biggest music Discord server on Yap. Wow, the Who's biggest one? one. It's the I think it's r slash music. Is genre. It? No, no, no. We're bigger really? than r slash music. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's hip hop, right? Yeah, uh, the hip hop, like just hip hop, like, like the, the whole genre. Yeah, they're the biggest. <laughs> That's the only thing that can top you, Tyler. Is, uh, <laughs> is hip hop the entire genre? That's awesome. Dang. Yeah, no, I think when you know a few years ago when you know we were building everything. I mean, Mark and I are constantly collaborating, um, whether it's on music videos or just everything that goes out, and a lot of times you guys will pick stuff up that we either we're not sure if it's being, if it, it was found or if it's understood. And, you know, so I would always tell, tell Mark like, Hey, go under the hood and try to figure out if, if they're getting this. And this discord was always one of those places that he would go to kind of feel out whether or not you guys were getting it or not. And you guys get it <laughs> a lot of the time. Oh, okay. 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 Well, that, are you ever going to let it flip? That, um, that kind of segues into one of the questions that I submitted to Mark. Um, hey, I'm the keeper of the you question. You want to know? Oh, okay. to I'm Mark Austin. Ahead, Matt, come on. Hey. These are my questions now. Okay, Mark. Okay. You're gonna, you're so gonna... I'm assuming you know the question. <laughs> I got them here. Okay. I'm just grabbing a few of them. So, yeah, Nackman and Poot. To, not to take your question from you, but here I go. <laughs> yeah. Is there any large part of Dima org slash Clancy that is out there, but no one has discovered or any major connections not made? Or are there any of them that haven't been made yet? <laughs> um, okay. Okay, good talk. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Straight up. Um, no. All right, that was, a good, that was a good voice chat, guys. Uh, yeah, thanks, yeah. guys. And that's thanks. a wrap. That's it, yeah. Um, I mean, thanks everybody for uh, yes. coming out today. Right, we hope you enjoyed. Yeah. I thought of all people, Tyler would be the least likely to make a leaving, um, a leaving oh, joke, but uh, but there we go. You guys there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think you tried saying something, and I think you just sort of, you know, bye. Yeah. Um. Good question. No. Yeah. There. There's <laughs> definitely a few things. I think. I, I don't know. There was a moment in time where I wanted to put more emphasis on why we're supposed to leave Dima. I, I don't know if that was ever actually fully uh, understood or realized. Um, it has a lot to do with, there's a religion inside of the city of Dima uh, called Vialism. And there was, there's kind of the secret of why Vialism is this, uh, is not good basically and when you discover the secret it is the reason why you would want to leave Dima but it's it takes a while to discover that secret um, ultimately when I was sharing kind of the story uh, of Dima with not only my manager but you know with Josh and Mark and a few other people they were I guess semi-concerned with how that story would come off um, I think that the song Neon Gravestones is a perfect, I guess there's a reason why it's in the middle of the record. Um, I guess, I'm kind of going off on a tangent here, but so Neon Gravestones, when I, when I wrote this, you know, when, when you're signed to a label and you have a bunch of partners, whether it's through your publishing or, uh, you know, your booking agencies, I mean, just a lot of people who work to make this work. Um, they're invested and on some level they they can speak into what you create now for josh and i we kind of got lucky because we got signed we worked with atlantic and feel by ramen and um they've been very good partners because they've just kind of backed off i think maybe when we first got signed they didn't know whether or not it was going to work so you know they throw some money at it they obviously they believed in it um so i don't want to like bad mouth our label or whatever but there was an aspect of it was like hey we're gonna go and tour and they thought 
well, that's kind of silly. You don't have any fans. Like, I know we don't, but <laughs> we, 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 we believe they'll show up. And so we, we didn't want to take any money from that. A lot of bands will, will get kind of this, uh, I don't know. What would you call it, Mark? Um, touring loan. Touring loan. That's not what it's called. <laughs> What's it called? A face. Great, great description. Oh, tour support? Tour support. That's right. Yeah. Where a label will, will help a band get what they need to go out on tour. Um, and because they didn't really necessarily believe in us going out and touring right away, they wanted us to work on our songs and try to find a single and try to like get it to work the way that normal bands get it to work. They weren't really on board right away with the whole touring idea. So we kind of, we just decided to tour. Anyway, um... I guess all that to say is we started, we set a precedent with our label that we were going to lead, we were going to take charge, and they appreciated that. Um, so I guess all that to say, it's a long story that our interaction with our label and the people who would speak into our songs have always defaulted to whatever you guys want to do. Um, then Neon Gravestones came around. And mm. when they heard that song, they there was like a lot of red flags. A lot of people. It went it went all up and down the building in New York City at Atlantic, mm. and they all listened to it and were extremely concerned about how it was going to come off. And they they really described it as this like giant landmine in the middle of the record <laughs> that could <laughs> like they they could they could like take away from all the you know all the good. And I'm mm. sitting there like man I. I don't see it that way. I feel like what I'm track. saying, I feel like what I'm saying is pretty clear. It's obviously like a call to action, a call, you know, ultimately a message of hope. Um, but I know for me, I wanted to hear the topic of suicide in an, at, at, at that angle, because that's what I would want to hear. And mm. if I believe that there was anyone like me, they would also want to hear it, need to hear it. And not not get it twisted up of like what is it what it is I'm trying to say. And so it was a bit of a battle. Like they they really wanted me to take it off the record, um, and mm. just to be safe. And I get it. I I understand um, their angle. I don't think that they were wrong in doing that. But there was this moment where I thought maybe I was making I don't know the way that they built it up. Like it was this huge mistake for me to have that song on the record. Mm -hmm. Um, and so with the rest of the story, like when I sat down and I told the story of Dima to a few of our label, uh, people, there were some of them that got it right away. And those are the people that like, I, I love working with, but I'd be lying if I were to say that everyone understood it and liked it or agreed with it. And so when I guess when Neon Gravestones came around, it was like kind of another reason for them to show, like, I don't think this is the right direction for this record. I don't think this is the right song to have on the record. Like, you could lose your career um, if this song isn't taken the right way. Um, so I think it was literally the night before I had to solidify the, uh, the track listing. I, I basically had to, like, make a call to the label, like, it's in or it's out. What what really made it tough though? I know I'm kind of going off on a tangent, but no, um, no. What, what made it tough was we decided to put the track listing on the album cover. Uh, so on on Trench, you can see the songs. That the track listing right. is there. I've always I always liked that that visual. I felt like it applied and made sense for that particular um, album cover. But the issue with that is a lot of times you can promote a new record. And announce a new record, but you don't have all of the um, everything buttoned up yet. So basically, hey, here's the album cover, and I'm still working through songs. I'm still trying to get the track listing in the right order. I'm still making sure that songs are crossing the finish line um, to make the deadline so that they can get mixed and mastered and all that. That's going to be so pretty the, intense. The issue with releasing a record that has the track listing on the front cover is that you got to lock that stuff in a lot sooner. If that makes sense, because you can't change that once it's on the cover. Um, so I was forced to really make a decision pretty quickly on whether or not, you know, this song, the Gravestones was going to, was going to 
stay on it or, or not. Cause I was basically warned this could be the end of your career. Um, obviously I felt like it was too important to take, to take off the record. Uh, but it also was kind of the, I don't know, the crux of the story itself. So the vilism, this religion that, that um, the bishops are basically in charge of, uh, that give them their, uh, it just, it, it makes them who they are. Vilism, when you figure out what the the theology of vilism talks about at the very end, it's that your goal in your life is to eventually take your own life and try to impact as many people as you can with that act. And the there's a reason why the outside of Dima is all graves, because that's where each of these they they would say it's a party they would say it's a celebration um of this person's funeral because of that act and the way that it's presented to people who live in dima is that this is a good thing like this is what your goal is is to try to impact and affect as many people as you can and then ultimately this is your final act and for someone in that position trying to realize why this doesn't feel right, they slowly start to see that there's another option. There's another way. That's not, that's, that, that's so wrong that I need to leave. Um, and with kind of the, the warning that our label was giving us about um, what that song could, you know, if it went the wrong way, I we decided to really kind of put a back seat to the to the religion of vilism, which is found inside of Dima. And also, I, I guess it, it sounds weird saying, hey, here's a new record from this band, 21 Pilots. It's about they, they made their own religion up. <laughs> that's not yeah, that's, that's not, not what cult, I was trying but, uh... to do. Yeah, that's not what I was trying. I was trying the, the religion itself is is the antagonist of this story. And all that to say, so there's a lot of that. There's a lot about that religion, and and how it disguises itself as a good thing, um, that that hasn't totally been realized yet. Uh-huh. Wow, that was one question. <laughs> yeah, was wow. insane. Um, insane. I actually, uh, I I want to go back to something you said, if that's okay. Um, yeah. You said that when you were first writing it, you wrote it for the purpose of you haven't heard heard like suicide talked about in this way before Mm -hmm. um but but i noticed i don't think suicide was ever like that word was never said on the song so was that um a choice on your end or was that like a compromise that you had to make with the label no no i never made any compromises when it came to like specific lyrics but that is a good question bringing up the word suicide in a song i mean Mm -hmm. when i was younger and i was writing for some reason it was always a lot easier for me to say that word. I think that I've said it a few times in old songs. Um, And now that that was when I wasn't writing for anyone but me. So Mm -hmm. for me to hear that word inside of my own song, it, it was, it was contained. It was, it, it didn't, it couldn't take a life of its own, that word itself. It could, it was only mine. Uh, And then when people started to start like listening to the band and listening to these songs, I realized that I, one, I wanted to take a little more pride in talking about that word in a way that maybe hasn't been talked about before. And that's where a metaphor would come in or an angle uh, on that word that hopefully is fresh, which kind of forced me as I became trying to become a better songwriter, wanting to not say that word black and white straight up was was one of my i don't it was one of my goals just like love i mean yeah i'll say love in a song but what what can i say that's different than that word that still communicates something as powerful as that single word and which is hard that's what songwriting is to me is trying to say something in a different way well you're really good at it (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, Stop it. Well, dang. Poot, uh, Poot had a question. 
to go back to uh, put you, you asked about uh, the break from social media and the fan base for a year and if it helped with the creation of trench. Poot, do you, uh, what, you want to harp on that a little bit? I don't remember the question. <laughs> you said, okay, see, this is why I took the questions because people weren't paying God, attention. Poot. Oh, Poot, uh, what are you thinking? I'll <laughs> speak for Poot. Your life. All right, yeah, you can speak for me. <laughs> Did the break from social media and the fan base for a year help with the creation of trench? Were there any ever moments you were tempted to come back earlier? Or were you ever tempted to wait longer? It's a good question. I know, Poot, you don't remember asking it, but it's a good one. <laughs> I remember now. I remember now. Oh, now you're refreshed. Mm, yeah. Okay. Of course, yeah. of course. Yeah. Um, the break from social media. It felt... It, it, when we... People started... Talk, saying it was the hiatus i don't think that when josh and i decided to do this where we got together and said let's go on a hiatus that wasn't we never said that word that just kind of started to happen um but we did know that at a certain moment we were going to i guess remove ourselves from social media and from any sort of interactions other than uh in person as much as we could at least and it felt both very natural, but kind of unnatural at the same time. Um, and I would bounce back and forth every other day where I'm so glad that this is, this is what we're doing. I'm so glad that we've removed ourselves. We're not seeing anything. We're not saying anything. We're just, we're just gone. And it feels like I'm kind of, I, I'm almost going back to that vacuum when I first started writing songs. Um, I mean, it'd be silly for me to believe that I could ever go back to that fully, but there was something about the fearlessness when I first started writing songs that brought so much reckless art that I, that I'm still proud of today. And to get back to that, I thought one of the steps would be to remove myself, both of us from, from social media. Uh, but at the same time, like I said, it felt unnatural. Um, because we live in a world where you're supposed to you're supposed to promote yourself. You're supposed to keep on talking. You're supposed to be a part of the conversation. And if you don't, then everything's going away. Uh, everything is gonna zoom past you, and there will be no one left when you when you come back. And um, not only that, but I guess a fear of no one being there when we came back, but also feeling a bit of guilt that we didn't fill everyone in on why we were leaving or how, how long it was going to be or what it was for. Um, and I always felt a little guilty about that. I do think that, that everyone who was invested at that, at that point probably deserved a, an explanation or at least a timeline. And um, that's kind of why I feel like coming out of it, Josh and I have vowed to never do it like that again. Um, That'll it'll never it'll never look like that in the future. Hmm. Uh, just okay. piggybacking onto that really quickly, I think you hinted at it uh, in when you were answering the first question. But um, when you started sort of upping the the um, the law uh, surrounding trench, you know, when you when you raised the Dima Org uh, website for the first time, did you stay up to date with sort of what the click was doing and stuff, or were you? still just in that state of uh of i guess like isolation um there was definitely moments where uh, we would jump in and see how it was going um but at the same time we were prepared for it to never be found out um i don't know it was something um i don't know it it could it could have been this time capsule that lived for years that, that was never realized until I, however many years later um, but to watch it get uncovered and be digested that quickly was exciting. I will say I was still in the writing process of the record when that stuff started to come out, when you guys started to find it. And it was this exciting time for me because taking a break from social media was supposed to be this, let me get back to that, that place I was when I was writing songs only for myself. But then I didn't realize how much I could be inspired by a group of people that I barely knew 
or that I am not currently interacting with. And it was, it was kind of a breath of fresh air to let the, I guess, keeping up with what people were finding was in turn kind of the cyclical thing that was also inspiring songs. You know, I know that the song Pet Cheetah was written after we had released that stuff. Uh, and after we had started to un- unveil the story of Dima and uh, the the lyric and the rap of Pet Cheetah talking about, you know, this click and what what it means to me. It's like that was written the night that, you know, Mark and I were, you know, were really uncovering what, how you guys were reacting to it. And so that's, that, that's cool for me. If, even if I never had a platform to express that to you guys, it was cool for me to know that while I was writing it. And um, when I hear that song and when I play that song live, I think back to that time when a group of people that relative to the way that friendship works, I barely knew were so important to me. Um, and it was kind of inspiring. That's very cool. Thank you for that answer. Yeah. Um, is it okay if, if real quick, uh, I just want to say something to the people listening. Um, I'm getting a lot of DMs from people wondering why they can't message the Tyler VC text. Um, for people just joining the server today, we have it turned off just so that we don't get like raiders and stuff who are like just joining to mess with us. So mm. we're just trying to keep this chat like contained and safe. So apologies to anybody just joining today, but that's just kind of how we're doing this right now. Sorry. Sad to say uh, Charlie, you're still there, yeah? Yep, I'm here. Charlie, you had a question. Uh, what is that one project, visual or musical, that you've never released in the end and you think it could have <laughs> been really good? Charlie, where'd that question come from? You just make that up or are you uh, uh, no, inspired actually... by a story or something? <laughs> no. So it's because we've heard like bits of songs that aren't actually like complete songs especially that one song it's like kind of old um ah, i think yeah it's uh yeah <laughs> that one so within the click it's kind of known like i need something i'm not really sure if it even has a title and i also included the visual part because well there's other stuff like maybe um the scene in the fairly local music video where y- josh had all that um the injuries oh, yeah. on his face i remember that Classic. So that's just where that question comes from. Yeah, I think ultimately, well, let's get let's go to fairly local. I think that pretty much every music video shoot we've ever done has felt like I, I wish it wasn't this rushed. You know, whether you're fighting daylight or you're fighting, you know, there's 30 people on set that are being paid, and as soon as I mean, these are all. You know, if it goes over a certain minute, amount of hours, they need a break and they need to eat and all these things, or you could, you know, get fined or sued or whatever because they work for a company that protects them, which I understand. But there's all these kind of, uh, I don't know, barriers that you're needing to work within when you record a music video, when you shoot a music video, uh, which is why I like just working with Mark, you know, me, Josh, and Mark making up a video and just shooting it um, has always has always kind of been some of my favorite music videos we've done because I can just look at Mark and be like, I know you haven't eaten in, in 19 hours, but suck it up. Let's do this. <laughs> and um, so I'm with not that protected. Being, yeah. <laughs> oh my so that, yeah he, Mark can't sue me. Well, I guess you could. I don't want to. It's fine, dude. It's always thanks, worth man. it. <laughs> um, with that being said, yeah, I think for specifically Fairly Local, there was this do you remember Mark? This was your yeah, treatment. No. This this was like the first time we shot with like a huge crew because it was like the first video for Blurry Face. And so the label got behind it. We shot in LA. Like it was the first time I had like a DP and like a, a assistant director that was like telling me that we need to hurry, hurry, hurry. And so we like just got to the scene where we were still shooting your stuff. And then we sent Josh to go get his makeup done for all the bloody effect for this you know, final scene that would happen when the song was over. And he comes back. He, like, looks really good. I'm like, damn, like, they spent a lot of time on that. He looks really good. 
and then we sent you to do it and we set it up and then i'm getting told like we're done we have to pay it's gonna be like you know twelve hundred dollars more if we go over in a single minute and like we're trying to like rush and not twelve hundred dude it's way more than that well it was like oh twelve hundred oh a minute like, for right yeah for every minute that we were going over that they wanted to charge us so like, yeah like, so josh got all that makeup on for a scene that we never we never shot and so mm -hmm. i think at some point he took a photo of himself with some beat up yep i remember that look like it dude yeah so homemade version like what was the idea behind that scene like why the injuries oh i just wanted to smack josh around <laughs> who doesn't let to beat him up i wanted <laughs> to does? beat him up <laughs> We, we got to a point where Josh was like, like too much of a bully on the road. So we had to like write a scene in a music video to where he gets knocked down a few notches. <laughs> Just get him back. Out. Get so him back. <laughs> so like then he'd quiet up on the tour. And so <laughs> it never worked because we never put it in the video. So he's still just oh, being. That's well, a he's bully. Well, I mean, probably beat you up. <laughs> he, he would definitely beat me up um i guess uh, to uh, you know continue to answer your question what are some things that you know i wish could have been released that weren't um we actually shot a music video for migraine that we never released and i don't know if we ever will i think maybe i don't know maybe at some point we will but so you, uh real quick you're talking about the non-uk one right because like yeah not the uk not the okay. uk one that oh, was something wow. we did for the uk label that they wanted they wanted to, to push that song and so we we ran around the city somewhere where was that mark we actually that was in brooklyn and, yeah mm -hmm. but it was for the uk and they they ran it on their own things over there and it was it was supposed to just kind of like stay over there but i think that was maybe one of the many lessons we learned where things don't stay you know my manager would always use the fr the phrase like it'll be geo what is it called fenced right mark geo fenced yeah geo yeah like it's only gonna it, whatever you get, you know, whether it's this interview or this song or this cover or this music video, it'll only stay over there. And I, I just remember looking at him all the time, having to explain to him that doesn't it doesn't work that way. It doesn't live. It doesn't stay there anymore. Um. So no, that's not what I'm talking about. There's actually one that we shot out. It was was it before we were signed, Mark? No, because I remember. The treatment got a bunch, like a bunch of people started weighing in on the treatment at the label. So it yeah. was definitely post signing. But I it thought was we like, shot it before we got signed, but then we had it in the hopper when we got signed. That sounds right. Yeah, was something. Anyway, was right. it it involves, it, I mean, it involves a gun, and we didn't. We thought that it was depicted in a, in a like respectful, metaphorical way, and um. I still stand behind it, but we do understand that releasing a music video with a single gun in it, even if it's just one scene, um, is I don't know. It's it's got a, it's got some baggage to it, and so that's why it never it never came out. But it's still something that I'm proud of, and we'll see we'll see if there's a time where it makes sense to oh, come out. That would be should, great, actually. Should I not have said that, Mark? If you ever want to leak it, I mean, if you ever want to leak it, just my, let us my know. My phone like. is ringing, and it's it's it just the says cops. Mr. Mr. By Ramen is calling me. <laughs> <laughs> his first name's Fueled. Yeah, <laughs> he sounds. Um, called his name, uh, Mr. So, John Ramen. Yeah. So, um, unfortunately, we're not on the road right now. But fortunately, you're home being a dad. Uh, I wrote that intro to this question myself, but Bill asked. Are there any fun stories from being a dad so far or any difficult adjustments into fatherhood that you've had to make? Um, man. I am a dad. I do feel like, I do feel like uh, people say like, oh, he's such a dad now. Uh, whether it's what I do or how I look or dress or move or whatever. And uh, I mean, Wait, did you say move? Yeah, the way that you dance move? like a dad. Whatever. Listen, <laughs> listen. That's a cop out. Anyone who says that, that's a cop out. I've always been that way. Now, all of a sudden, I've just manifested myself into actually being a dad, and now you're seeing me differently. But I, I haven't changed. Yeah, big so, dad energy always. Yeah. <laughs> Shut it down. Um. Oh man. Rosie's so cool. Yeah, she's. 
I guess when I, when, when Jenna and I were first pregnant, I, I mean, I, I don't know if it's natural for, you know, me to want a boy. Um, and I think that right away when we, we knew we were pregnant, I decided I w I really wanted to just wrap my mind around. It can be either and it can be anything. And I want to, I want to love it no matter what, like I'm not going to play favors. And so people would even ask me like, what, what do you want a boy or a girl? And I would say, it doesn't matter. Hmm. I guess maybe a tiny bit in the back of my mind, I was like, man, if I had like a, a mini me, that'd be awesome. You know, she's like, going to watch so this cool. like 10 years from now and be like, yo, <laughs> but not? okay. So I guess I'm saying that to, to, to set it up that I cannot imagine not having her now. Um, you know, like even with her name, Rosie, when you Wait, think about, I don't know if you guys like look at your parents or whatever. And you're like, how did you even name me? How did you, how did you have, how'd you land on that name for me? And how are you not nervous that it was the wrong name or that it was going to mess my life up forever because uh, it was the wrong name. And, I remember before she was born, before like the final decision is made on what her name is going to be, there definitely was that pressure and was that, I don't know, concern about, is this the right name? Is this, should we change it? And all this stuff. And then it, it truly is this silly, emotional, out of body moment where you see her, you meet her, and it's like, oh, that was always your name. And that's when, that's why when you talk to your parents about naming you, they treat it so nonchalantly. Like, yeah, that was your name. Yeah, we liked it. It's your name. You would think that they would talk about how difficult it was to name you. But it's because it's, you're, you're talking to them post having that experience where they see you for the first time and you, you realize, oh, that name, it connects and it will never I don't know. Um, so that's, that was, that was exciting for me to, to watch that. And I mean, if she wants to change her name at some point, I'm all for it. Uh, she can do whatever she wants. Uh, uh, Mary, Mary in the uh, text chat says, what if Rosie doesn't like your band? <laughs> um, she does oh stop crying when I sing. Oh. So that's a thing. Oh, that's adorable. Uh, maybe that, very cute. That's maybe very that'll cute. maybe that'll change. I don't know. I, I feel like <laughs> I feel like maybe I'm more. I'm I'm less interesting now that I'm a my dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, you you, you hit, hit, hit the nail that. right on the head. Yeah. I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> maybe I gotta post some dark stuff. Nat just doesn't <laughs> pull punches. Yeah, Color will get you. You gotta watch out. Yeah. So I mean, I am I here actually, for the dark stuff. Kind of along those lines, I have a little bit of a question I was thinking about earlier. So yeah. it's back taking a step back a little bit, but given everything kind of going on, how how has it kind of been like, how do you feel like for you personally, it's affected you like you spending more time possibly with like Rosie and Jenna because of everything going on? Uh, I think that for me, I've I've I've, I've always enjoyed being alone. Uh, I still do. And so there's always these like hurdles that you have to get over. Um, if you're someone like me that likes to kind of be alone, you know, starting to date someone you're, you know, you're on the hook mm -hmm. a bit and then, you know, getting married, you're, you're really hooked. You're not <laughs> alone anymore. And then having a kid, it's like, okay, now I'm like really not alone. <laughs> I was worried, like, how's that going to affect not just me as a person, but also like what I create because I create and I write, I think the best when I'm kind of just isolated and alone. And um, it has been this interesting uh, back and forth. We're realizing uh, I need to do a better job of managing my time. It's not that I have less time to be alone. It's that I need to be intentional about when I'm present for my family and when and being on the same page with my family about when I need to be alone and kind of developing a schedule. You know, I, I'm actually up most hours of the night and I'm, I'm kind of watching right now. I'm watching Rosie on a, on a, uh, like a baby monitor or whatever. <laughs> and Jenna is going to go to sleep. And oh. so then when, when Rosie gets up at like 5am, 
that's when my writing process is over. I get her up, <laughs> give her to Jenna, and I go to bed. So right now, it, it, it's kind of this crazy, Jenna and I don't see each other much, um, but we still <laughs> feel like we're connected through this small human. Uh, I think that as as our daughter gets older and she has more of a normal sleeping schedule, then we'll get back to <laughs> back to normal. But yeah, it's tough wondering how your how your schedule is going to change and how your whether it's your job or your your hobbies or your passions how are they going to change when you start to you start a relationship or a family and um it's still something I'm figuring out but I found that the more of a, I've I've had to just be more um uh, have more self control with my time management Nice. Very, very interesting. Yeah. yeah I don't, I don't yeah. know. I, I kind of think that's not interesting. I actually thought it was. Okay. okay. Yeah. I was, kinda, I was, I was worried Impact you wouldn't. You're ready. I, I, oh, sorry. Carl. Oh, no, it's okay. I was worried you wouldn't have wanted to talk about that because I feel like now, since like, I don't know, ever since it was it was announced, it was like spread like wildfire. So I'm sure you get asked about it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> And again, yes. that like the line between your personal life and your public life and not knowing like what lines can be crossed, what can be talked about, not talked about during like this whole yeah. thing, this new development here. Yeah. Um, I, I think that I, when I was younger, I definitely thought being famous would be cool. I definitely... I don't think that I was writing songs to be famous. Uh, I definitely want to check myself on that, though, because, it'd be, I mean, it, being famous is is a side effect of some level of success. So some, sometimes those two things are married to each other, and I, I've always wanted to be... I, I always tried my hardest to be successful. I, I always wanted to prove to myself that I that I had something worth it and so um all that to say i think that being famous is a, a great platform i mean i it's it, it gets old sometimes for sure i feel like i've not honestly like having this conversation with you guys and whoever else is listening um is one of the first times that I've felt normal in a, in a while, you know, and I think that I'd love to do this more often. I don't know if it'll, it'll ruin anything, but no, no, you and like you just can't have a normal conversation, you know? So for me, I, this is the most normal conversation I've, I've had with anyone except for my immediate family in a long time. And so in that sense, yeah, uh, the, the fame and the, the baggage that comes with it does start to get old. Now, as far as like how much of my family and personal life do I want to to show, I think that when we first started coming up, we rubbed shoulders with a lot of bands and artists that were famous that their strategy was like, take them out of it. Don't show, you know, don't show your kids, don't show your wife, like keep everyone at bay and and Walk like you're you're the face of of the thing that you're doing. At least that's kind of the vibe that I got from a lot of the people that I started interacting with. And it just didn't feel right. Um, I think that, you know, putting my daughter in a music video, that was the first time, you know, she's like, she was two months old. Will she, will she be mad at me someday? I don't know. I didn't ask her permission. And I, I, don't, I, don't, I hope that I didn't do anything wrong. So we'll see. I, guess like, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't mean to, I don't know. I just think, I think like, from my perspective, I feel like if um like many other musicians that I follow, if they did that, I would find it a little weirder than like when you did it, because like this community is so close knit. Yeah. Like we like we're involved in a way, and like I feel yeah. like it was for you to do that. Well, good. I'm glad that it comes yeah. off that way, because I I feel the same. I I wouldn't. I'm not just doing that because you know, of some marketing ploy. It's like, I, I'm so <laughs> proud of my, of my family and, and the people in my life. I want them to be a part of what I'm doing. I want them to, you know, meet the other people that are, you know, fans of, of this music. And I mean, that's what we've been doing, 
you know, from the beginning, you know, obviously was stressed out having like our whole family in it. My mom still gets people walking up to her. <laughs> hey, <laughs> in that video. <laughs> Props to announcing the pregnancy in Berlin, by the way. That was a good choice of good choice of oh, city. Oh yeah, I was oh, watching yeah. that video yesterday. Kind of made me cry a little bit, to be honest. A little bit, yeah. That was a last minute thing. You know, we we knew for a few. Uh, I forget exactly how far along Jenna was when when we did that, but um, there was this. I don't know, such a buildup of like how to announce it and when to announce it. I think right before I went on stage. I told I told Jen, I was like, let's do it. Let's just let me just say just be side stage for in between this song and this song. She's like, what do you mean? I was like, just be side stage between this song and this song. And um I think she knew what that meant, but I didn't really tell her. And then and then I just went with it. And that's how we announced it. We brought her out on stage and um whatever. <laughs> whatever. I'm realizing now I didn't really ask like if she's cool that <laughs> were just, like, she's just, like, just angry chill. just pissed the whole time yeah she goes with the flow. Uh, that's why yeah oh she's that was so that. cute um kaden and chat here interesting question how do you feel about people bringing ukes and stuff and playing outside before and after shows um so you know you kind of always joke about the uke on stage and then it's kind of become a ph phenomenon like i get an opportunity most of the shows to go out there and interview fans for footage for you. And, and I always see someone playing the uke. Like what's that kind of from your perspective to see a bunch of fans kind of just bring in this one instrument and like deciding to play it. It's a good question. I, I I'll always find it hard to believe that I've influenced anyone. I think that when I see someone doing something that may be similar to what we're doing or is in direct, you know, um, reaction to what we've done i've oh i'll always assume it's because someone else in their life influenced them i don't know why i just have never been able to fully wrap my mind around you because i wrote a song on the ukulele and because i played the ukulele on stage that people picked up the ukulele though i think that's extremely cool hmm. um when people play uke out out front of, you know before our shows in line or whatever i just think that that i mean stuff like that is why i love these people so much um, because they're so, I don't know, whether it's whatever they have, whether it's uh, tech savvy, artistic, um, sense of humor, uh, they, they have an opportunity to, to show that. Uh, and a concert, I guess, is usually just people up on stage showing you what they wrote in their, in their studios. But for me, watching our shows and, and our crowds and the people that come to our shows, I realized it, it turned into something bigger than that. And as far as like bands going out, I think that we've had some bands that, that um, like go to our line before our show and like self-promote. Uh, I, I get it. I did that. You know, I actually <laughs> snuck a CD into a tour bus several times, like Ooh. through the crack of the door. <laughs> um, Guilty as so, dedication, though. So I get it. Like I, I, I mean, that's part of the hustle, and I would never knock him for it. Wow. Um, I this, I this question is like super unrelated, but I heard you say the word influence, and like I really, I really need to ask. Um, you have brought up uh, Death Cab for like a major influence behind your music, and I was wondering if there's like any other artists out there that influence you um the same way they do by any chance like can, even like yeah. maybe contemporaries that like you know bands that are similar to you already like what they're doing now do you, does that influence what you do um I, I i definitely don't listen to music as much as i used to uh which is i i i, I wish i did um i think that when i'm when it's music time for me, I'm, I'm trying to write it. I'm trying to create it. I mean, there's an idea right now that I'm working on that's in my head that I can't, like, I can't even listen to another song right now until I crack the code on this thing. Um, so my, uh, it's hard for me to add to my repertoire of people I listen to. You know, uh, Josh and I have a theory that you 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 become a certain age and 
your new bands or new songs are capped and it's like mm-hmm. like my, my like our dads aren't hip to what's coming out you know what i mean like at some point yeah. you're, you're vibing stop. To personally yeah you cap it off you're like here's my library here's my repertoire this is this is all i need and um as a band who wants to continue to write songs that kind of scares us you know what what if you know everything we create after this point in time just kind of doesn't matter anymore um and then we look to certain bands that we've continued to listen to no matter what they do and death cab is one of them you know their latest record was one of my favorite ones um and so i guess we we view them as kind of a sense of hope because for us we've continued to want to hear what they have to say uh, even though a lot of the bands that we consider influences are artists that have that we've listened a lot to the truth is i don't know i, I don't know if they released a record recently and i mm. don't I, I honestly don't know if I care anymore, but I love the record that they released a long time ago when I was excited about it. Right. Um, so I don't know. Uh, just to name a few, I mean, old stuff, Billy Joel. Um, I really, I think Ben Folds was the first guy that I really was interested in like, Oh, playing the piano can be cool. Um, <laughs> and so he was, he was an influence. I actually saw him in an airport. Wow. And you mean he saw you. No. no <laughs> he did not see me. I saw yeah. him and Josh, who's way more relaxed about this stuff, he would just walk up to anyone. He doesn't care. But for me, I, I start to I don't I don't know. I kind of crumble a little bit. Oh he was so God. mad at me because I knew that if I told Josh, because Josh didn't know who Ben Folds is. If I told Josh, hey, that's Ben Folds, or he knows who he is because I talk about Ben Folds all the time, but he doesn't know what Ben Folds looks like. So I had to wait for Ben Folds to walk past me, get onto his tram, and head to his gate before I told Josh that was Ben Folds. He just walked by us. He was so mad at me that I didn't say anything to him, and I didn't, I didn't like introduce myself or whatever, because that's what Josh would do, but I just never would. Um, and that's a part of why Josh and I being so different um, we kind of like, I don't know. It's nice. It's nice that we're different in some of those ways. Yeah, a lot of times, like introverts, they rely on their extroverted friend to kind of help balance it out and like be their guts for them for certain things and take. Yeah, them I mean, we we played a show in the UK. I think it was yeah, Reading and Leeds Festival. Was that last year? I think. And, um, I I told we covered a song by Oasis. And I told Josh, I was like, man, it'd be cool if, you know, someone, you know, joined us on stage, but I don't know any of these bands that we're playing with. And he goes, Post Malone's playing with us. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know him. He's like, I know him. I'm like, what do you mean you know him? <laughs> I, I was like, yeah, I know him. And so I, Josh, you know, kind of, I guess, knows Post Malone and went up to him and <laughs> like met him down in some lobby at some hotel and they hung out all night and like they're cool and you know asked him if he wants to come out on stage and and help us cover a song for a festival and he was like yeah let's do it and it's like things like that that for me i i would never have i'm so glad it happened it was so exciting and so awesome and when i met him i realized man this guy's really a nice dude and I don't, you know, but I, I never, that would never have happened without Josh. And there's a lot of those, Hmm. there's, there's a lot of those stories. There's a lot of things that we would never have found ourselves doing, um, or meeting or interacting with certain people, uh, if Josh weren't in this band, uh, because my default is, uh, I don't, I don't want to find out that you don't like me. You know what I mean? I, <laughs> if, if I can, I if I can avoid finding out that you don't like me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick that route every time. So, so uh, respectable. Mm-hmm. Um, Jenna is texting me. I, she says she's made me food. <laughs> <laughs> How long do you guys want to go? I'd love to do this again. No, oh, yeah, we'll have to reschedule. Do um, it again. I'm in well, direct contact with everyone here, so. Day, that's. Happen. Totally fine. Totally yeah. fine. I kind of want to know yeah. about you guys. You never, you, you never accepted my request, Mark. <laughs> yeah, what's up with that? Well, I only <laughs> talk through Knackpin. 
When I talk to Nackpin, I just say Nackpin, Nackpin. I'm talking to Nackpin just out loud because I just love, I love how that sounds. It's a very satisfying name to say. Nackpin, Nackpin. You know, I I thought we had something together, Mark. Like that handhold at the uh-huh. barricade in Denver, we just sat there looking at each other. It was weird, but it worked. That was a good one. Yeah. Do you uh, have Mark, is there uh, another one? Is there one more like wrap up question or whatever before we uh, call it? Well, let's. Uh, we could always talk about Ned and uh, real quick, just the design of Ned, where he came from. This comes from the insufferable cat, which is mm. a, a name of someone here. Mm. Um, <laughs> yep, that's cat. So, so Ned, you know, Ned's a, a good buddy of yours. You, he seems to hang out with you the most on tour whenever he's out. Um, I, I know he's back home in Australia, but I just didn't know if you've talked to him or, or kind of want to talk about your friendship with him and all that. Yeah, I, the whole time you were talking, I was looking at Discord chat. <laughs> oh my god, the classic, sorry, the Mark. classic Discord problem. <laughs> Isn't that the worst when people I'm, do live yeah. stuff and they just, you're, it's like half of it is watching them just like read stupid things and they don't even read it out loud. You can just tell they're reading. They have like a reading face on. <laughs> <laughs> we I have like that. watching streamers that have uh, reading glasses on the tip of their nose when they're looking at chat. That's yeah, you look at the Discord server instead of and like save that question for later. That's yeah. cool. Um, so I, I guess I could like if that's fine with you, I could fill you in on some stuff like just about the server in general. Me right now? Yeah, yeah. I mean, unless you <laughs> want to talk about Ned, I just you no, I mean, you were, unless you want no, to eat I, food. I, I I I like Discord. I mean, if they're not going to play ball with us, then then I'm going to be pissed. So. <laughs> I'm gonna read. Uh, oh. <laughs> I just think it's it, it is it is a cool place for us to get together uh, yeah. like this. Um, and I, what do you get streaming on YouTube right now? Is that yeah, right, right now. Yeah, yep, I'm I'm running it. Okay, that works. I guess it would be yeah. cool to do it in Discord, but it would. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, we can give it um, another try. Like this is yeah. uh, also this is my burner account, so don't even try spamming it. <laughs> yeah, like good move. Good move. I like the different I mean, Pokemon yeah. next time. Yeah, Scyther. I will say, someone asked me in, a, in an interview uh, a couple days ago what my favorite Pokemon was, and I just like said the first thing that came to my mind. I said Clefairy. I don't. I don't. <laughs> mean that. that was a mistake. I, that was that was wrong. I um, in an interview. No. It, oh. It's actually it's actually Wigglytuff. It's like W. Wigglytuff. That's a, dub. That's a bold choice. Nah. That's a very right, bold well, choice. Thank you, Tyler, for coming by. Thank you, uh, Discord <laughs> Click. We uh, appreciate all the hard work you put into this. Um, if you're listening, make sure you sign up for Discord and join the server for all things 21 Pilots news and fan theories. And they even have a whole channel that just posts whenever I post on social media. So I'm going to post <laughs> a picture that. of my cat, and you're all going to have to look at it. Hey, let's do this again, though. Yes. Sure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Like, that would... We even have like casual voice chats all the time too. So like, yeah, you can drop in whenever and just like come chill. on in. You, you might make people cry if you do that. Actually, so. yeah, <laughs> people, people, really people do do that. Cry if you do that, yeah, yeah, don't cry. Do that. And maybe give us a <laughs> heads up. Kidding. Maybe give us a heads up because if people uh, realize you're in chat. We might not be ready to handle that. that will be. Moderation. I'll, always, I'll work through Mark. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'll always work through Mark. Yeah, we had 1,400 people in a voice chat earlier, and I think that would get a bit messy. Yeah. Just a bit. <laughs> Maybe a little. Yeah, 3,000 people joined after we tweeted, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think it's gotten higher. It's, 4, yeah. it's oh, almost yeah. 4,000 now. Yeah. yeah, well, honestly, though, thanks for actually, like, reaching out, coming, doing this. Like, it's... Yeah been awesome and like at first a lot of us were kind of scared that you're gonna drag us because your humor sometimes can be like a certain oh, yeah. way like is he gonna make us cry on stream <laughs> like, we we're gonna so... get roasted yeah i mean most of you guys sound pretty annoying <laughs> I, honestly, yeah. I honestly uh, agree so that's the greatest thing someone's ever told me <laughs> um Thanks, all right Tyler. yeah well i'll let mark know we'll co- we'll collaborate and yeah if we do this again you guys you know send it out i'd love to uh, like I said, this is the first time in a long time I felt like we could, I could just have a normal conversation um, with with you guys. So, yeah, I, I liked well, it. One quick thing before I just don't want to forget it here. Poot's probably going to kill me, but it's his birthday. <laughs> you should wish him happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday, Poot. Happy birthday, Poot. <laughs> <laughs>
He did that on purpose, by the way. All right. (laughs) Well, thank you. Thank you for taking care of this. I know we hit a little bit of a um, issue there with Discord shutting down Uh, and being crazy for people and driving up CPU usage and that. Um, (laughs) But you guys found a a quick solution, and we appreciate that. Um, Like I said earlier, if you're listening, please check out the Discord click on Twitter and then follow that link to join the server on Discord. Um, Also, you know, the subreddit, Join Wild subreddit is the official Reddit uh, for the band. This is the official Discord. Have all your discussions here. Everyone here, hey, your moderators, admins, everybody, don't get lazy on this. Keep it up to good work. We We really appreciate it. I got the job. Yeah, definitely not. That's awesome. All right. It's official. Don't forget forget about what what I DM'd you about earlier. That still still has to happen. Let me see. Let me roll, scroll back here and see what you're talking about. (laughs) I just realized Tyler left it. I don't have yeah, to join. Did, yeah, I don't have to join and leave sounds because of streaming. So I well, no, he's he had to go eat. Didn't you hear the thing about eating? Well, yeah, yeah, I heard that, but I didn't <laughs> see when he actually. Can someone, someone just sit him? here and starve? Can we tweet at him? What was he eating? Hey, Mark, can you fill us in? I ate dinner I, I, before. Yeah, do you know what is he? What his dinner is? What's he I mean, eating right now, Mark? Please. Is he getting eating sushi eating right like now, Josh Mark? did last time? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Can we call him again? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Sometimes, like, we'll funny. say jokes with you, Mark. Like, last time with the asking Josh about the drumsticks, knowing that that was a frequent question that, like, wasn't, like, to be asked. So, like, just hopefully you could pick up those things that were not just being, like, those people. We're not actually bad people. We just act like it. We just, well, I get it. Uh, I get it. All right. Well, I'm going to uh, go and um, I think I'm going to go play Apex Legends. Ooh, Which you can okay, catch on twitch.com slash Mr. Victor Jones. Oh, nope, nope, that's the wrong one. No! <laughs> I'm not plugging my channel. Okay, see ya. Okay. Bye. Bye. Play Valorant with me. Play Valorant with me sometime. Bye. Um, <laughs> All right, well, I, need, I, need, I actually need players for Valorant. I'll, so I'll play with you. Dude, hit me up. <laughs> I'm see very ya. bad. Okay, okay, bye, Mark. <laughs> okay, well, that was um, fun. So while I still have people here, just uh, um, a heads up tomorrow. We are going to do a grand opening of our Minecraft server. You can access it right now if you go to rules. Um, we're going to tweet the link, and all of us are going to be on there. Um, so come join. We have a creative and a survival world. Um, and then the day after that, we're going to be doing a Bandito FM live stream where we are going to be playing some songs that came out this year, and we're going to be talking about it so we can show you guys some new music that you might have missed. And yeah. That's that's the yeah. next few days.